welcome to New Vocations at Lairworth Farm, our virtual tour here at one o'clock. Um, we are here at our Lexington facility and it's not such a beautiful day today, but we're told tomorrow it's going to be 80. I'm not sure where everyone that's watching um, is at today, but um, it's about 50 degrees or maybe 55 if we're lucky today and a little bit overcast and rainy. Um, but this is our virtual tour that we've been doing at one o'clock. I believe this is our eighth week. And um, we just want to give you a little bit of a tour of our facility here. We're going to introduce you to a field that we haven't talked about before and then go through our training barn and then end up in our indoor arena. So um, with further ado, um, as Leandra is our camera person, she's also our trainer. You're going to meet her in a bit. Um, Leandra, if you just want to kind of zoom around and see these guys in our facility, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of new vocation what we're all about because I'm not really sure who all has been on our tours before and who might be new. and our newest facility in Louisiana. And so, um, again, our mission is to work with the racing industry. We work with over 40 different racetracks uh, or have horses coming in from 40 different racetracks across the country. And it's been pretty busy here. Um, you know, a lot of the racing right now is, is closed. Um, I know we're looking forward to having Churchill open for racing this weekend, but there's still a lot of tracks that are closed. And, um, we have not seen a huge increase of horses needing our care quite yet, uh, but we do see, we do think that that's going to increase in the near future. However, one of the things that we have seen since the whole lockdown and COVID is that we've had a huge increase in number of adoptions. And in last month we had 60 adoptions, um, which is a, our largest adoption month in history. And so in this year, sorry, not this year, but this month, we've already had 25 adoptions. So it's still looking really, really so with further to do, let's look here in the Mandy Pope field, Leandra. We've got three horses out here. And um, this field is, is very special. Um, there's a horse out there with the blaze, the white on his face. His name is Ranger. And he has a very important job here in New Vocations. He is our babysitter. And he is our only horse that lives with us year round. Every other, all the other horses here that you'll see are all um, up for adoption or are going to be up for adoption and our goal is to get them into new, a new home and career. However, Ranger is our only guy that stays here with us and um, he actually was donated to us by the late Joyce Ramsham. He is a full brother to a stallion named Discreet Cat who stood over at John Abel, our partners with um, Visiting Horse Country Tours. And um, he was born with a slight deformity of his left hind leg. It's kind of hard to see there now. Um, but it became apparent that he was not going to be able to go on to be a racehorse like he was bred to be. And um, so they called us to see if we might be willing to take him. And um, they've been big supporters of ours. And actually, our training barn was sponsored by them, <laughs> as well as Rapoli Stables. And so we, we said, yes, we absolutely will take him. but. He is going to have, if he's going to stay with us year round, he's going to have to have a job. And that is, he's going to have to be a babysitter. And so it might sound like an easy job. Um, I can't say that I actually was a babysitter growing up. <laughs> but if I were, I would, I now know as a mom that it's a very hard job. And um, for these racehorses, when they're coming off the racetrack, they haven't been turned out and able to even touch other horses for, for, many years and sometimes you know just months um, when they're at the racetrack they're in their stalls 23 hours a, a day and um, when they're out they're under tack and they're they're working out so for them to come here 
one of the first things we do is we buddy them up with a horse like Ranger. And um, Ranger then, it's his job to kind of teach them how to behave on turnout and how to socialize. And um, he gets some of the most naughty boys who naturally want to go out and just bite each other, kick each other, because um, they don't really know any better. And Ranger stands his grounds. He doesn't try to hurt them, but he um, is a big boy, as you can see. <laughs> and he teaches them how to behave. Uh, I have Leandra behind the camera. Maybe you can share about the two horses that are out here and what Ranger has taught them. Sure. Uh, so the chestnut that Ranger is standing with right now is named Blasted Notion and Blasted had an injury to his suspensory that required significant rehab time and he was not a very good citizen as we found out in turnout. So like Anna mentioned, um, a lot of the horses are coming from situations where they, they're not really socially um, equipped for you know things like sharing, things that siblings might learn from a lot of the social interactions when you're young and and he just he wasn't a very good um, comrade in, in the field so after he had a couple failed turnout buddies where the horses ended up very um, shy of him and cowering in the side of the field because Blasted was more of a tyrant than a friend we decided to move him over here with Ranger who quickly and swiftly corrected that behavior um, and he does so, like Anna said, really easily. He does not have to use force. It's, it's very anticlimactic, but he, somehow he teaches them to be good citizens. And in doing so, we were able to have them in this field where we turn out other horses. So Barahona here, who's the dark bay in the field, is a newer member of this field and he comes in and out. He has a training stall. He's currently doing rehab rides for um, superficial digital flexor tendon injury that he had that just needed more time and Barahona is another horse who can be a little more assertive in the field and was not as good as, as being a buddy with some of the others so he could be in this field but what is significant too is that Blast the Notion could not have before probably been in a field where you had three horses without trying to chase out one and he's blasted the chestnut back there is um, standing really nicely with Ranger and not bullying Barahona who you know for many of you horse people know that um, it's hard to have alpha types together so horses who are a little more dominant together and so this is a really nice example of how Ranger has created this situation where we can have two more alpha types without them competing or being bullies to each other. So definitely Ranger is a highly prized member of this barn and you really couldn't do much of some of this kind of stuff without him because it's just better said coming from another horse. Oh, that's right. Okay. We'll swap back. Great. Well, with that, We'll go ahead and move on into the Rockton of Pulling Barn. You can see here, this is um, our, one of our cane barns. We have two identical ones. They both have uh, 15 stalls, so there's 30 stalls on this side of the property. We have over 150 acres of pasture. And um, we're going to go in and Yes, I don't know. <laughs> All the days seem like the same. <laughs> Monday, I think it was Monday. Derby, there was a horse named Charlatan that, that won the first or second divi first division of the Arkansas Derby. He was trained by um, Bob Baffert, and the reason we mentioned him is because this was his work buddy. 
Um, this is Dr. Doerr, and he was also at Ocon, and um, then ship, he raced his last race there, shipped back to California, and his owner's Bob's wife, Jill Fabbert, and she called us and she said, you know, it was time for her beloved Dr. Doerr, who was named after um, a doctor who did his surgery on her hip, and she wanted to make sure that since he was retiring sound and was a really um, athletic individual that he went on to a second career, not just into a retirement home. And so we got Dr. Doherty caught a ride back from California um, and arrived here on Monday morning and he walked off the trailer just like he owned the place. Yep. And um, at the beginning stages of his transitional training, he's just going out by himself right now. Um, but he might be one that eventually goes out with Ranger in a little bit, probably another week or so. So we're excited to have him. Like I said, he's seven years old and um, we're really looking forward to seeing what he could do. So, and again, coming from California, it's not unusual these days. The horses ship all the time cross country, and we are seeing more and more horses coming from the California racetracks um, in the last couple of years. Let's see what else we have. Down here, <laughs> Key Shark is one that we featured not too long ago. Um, we have a horse named Jumping Through Hoops who's going to be in our indoors that we're going to see next. And then the Street Fantasy was one that I wanted to kind of point out. He was bred by a local farm here, Kinkle Farm. And he is actually uh, by the Street Cat, who was Ranger's brother. And um, so we're excited to have him. He's a, is he up for adoption yet? Not yet. He lost a shoe, but hopefully he'll <laughs> <lost laughs> Oh, no, buddy. He just got it put back on, so we're hoping to get him up online soon. In during the day because he is out all night and so once the residents the horses here have been with us for um, at least several weeks and most of the time it's been about a month they, their, their routine changes uh, from being turned out during the day where we can keep an eye on them to where they're turned out all night and then they come in during the day where then um, Leandra and her crew can work with them and so when they're in here during the day, they all look a little sleepy, especially on a rainy day like today, because they probably had a pretty rough night playing in the field, just like you. So at least one to watch for on our website. <laughs> Walk down to the end of the barn. He actually just got adopted. Oh, he just got adopted. Yay! Are you going to Alabama? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be fun. Okay. Well, we're excited to have him. Um, and then we have Jumping Through Hoops, who's
looking for the horses that getting the saving they need. a little camera swap. And let oops, let Leandra tell us about who's in here and what the training program is like. And again, um, I know we mentioned if you want to ask any questions, feel free to put that in the comment section and we'll be sure to get to that. Okay. Hey guys. So this is jumping through So Jumping Through Hoops is a 2016 gelding. He's been with us for a little while. He started in the rehab program, as Anna had mentioned. That is generally something that plays a significant role in a lot of the horses program through rehabbing, retraining, and then eventually rehoming. So Jumping Through Hoops is just now at the point where he's ready to be adopted and we've gotten his pictures, we've gotten his videos. So he should be up on our website at newvocations.org really soon. But what's been really fun to see him progress through is just the healing process. So he had some changes in his ankles and in his knees just from the rigors of racing and being an athlete. And so now he's feeling really good. We've made changes to um, like you've seen with his social atmosphere worked him up from just being turned on in a small paddock to being able to go out with a bigger group. So he now does really well in a bigger paddock with other buddies. He ha is in a really standard exercise routine and is starting to flourish. So it's been really fun to watch him throughout that progress and he is just a really lovely, caring, sweet gelding through and through. We could see him going in a lot of different directions as far as his next career. But we're thinking even something like a pleasure and trail lifestyle would be really great for him. So now I'm going to take him around, take him for a little catwalk. <laughs> And if you're hearing a little buzzing sound in the background, that's just uh, the wind blowing through our indoor. So it actually serves as an interesting litmus test for our horses. To see if it bothers them, and if it bothers them, then we can work through that as part of our training process. Trying to build their self-confidence, which in turn translates to their overall confidence under saddle. Dom, what do you think about him? You've ridden him a couple of times now, right? Yeah, he's been really good. Um, she says he's been really good. He's just been getting steered forward a lot. Getting a little more amped up. I mean, this is the second time he's been doing that. She says he's, usually, he's really good. She says he's usually really straightforward, and this is him pumped up, right? <laughs> That's his first time at the indoor. <laughs> she goes with one rein. She says this is him when he's excited. So, hoops, as we call him is um, generally just a very laid back horse. So, so again, his, this is his excited. He's a long ways from his career as a racehorse where he had to focus mostly on speed and competition and now he is much happier to embrace the pleasure lifestyle and routine that we're asking of him since he was not as competitive as a racehorse. But we think he will make a really phenomenal 
mentors for somebody in his new career path? He's really sweet. He's really willing. Not too worried about going fast right now, clearly. <laughs> And he raced in California, yes. Churchill, and Keeneland, I believe, yeah. So in case you can't hear Anna say that, he raced in California, and here in Churchill, and Kentucky, and we're all... I think Keeneland as well. And Keeneland as well. So he's done some high-level racing, and he definitely deserves a nice retirement, another career path. Let's see they all. Okay. Ask for questions. If there are any questions, feel free to type them into the comments box. We're happy to have you all here on the virtual tour today. So please feel free to let us know if you have any questions along the way. Are you okay to do the how you can help closing? Sure. Okay. That's pretty good. No questions, so if you wanna wrap it up. So if we have no questions, which it seems we don't at the moment, feel free again to type those into the comments box even after the fact and we have somebody monitoring to see if any questions pop up afterwards and we'll try to circle back and answer those as we can. So we'll wrap up our tour here if that's all we can do for you guys today. We do this every week, so in, every week it's a little bit different. We have different horses, different things going on and we're just really happy to be able to show you guys our facility, especially in the, these times where we can't have you all here in person. So if you're wondering how you can help after the fact, you are always welcome to um, help in several different ways. We really, we rely on donations to stay running and to be able to help these horses as we do. So we're always really grateful for donations when you're able to make them. You can make them through our website, newvocations.org. And you can check out how you can help in a lot of different ways, which I think is kind of neat. So it's not just, you don't have to just do a generalized thing, but say you want to help towards one thing or another, lots of different options. If you're thinking about adopting a horse or just bringing a horse into your life in general, we would love for you to consider new vocations as one of your options. You can see all the wonderful horses we have currently available for adoption on our website again newvocations.org. If you go to the horses tab, you can see all the lovely faces that we have available now. And we always have horses coming up in the wings. And for every horse who gets adopted, that opens up a stall for us to be able to bring in another horse. So those are just a few of the ways that you can help. We'd love to have help however you're able to give. And as always, we'd love to have you guys tuning in here. Every week we do this virtual tour. Every day we have a meet and greet of newly adoptable horses at noon and we're just happy to be able to show you guys all these all these mm -hmm. things even from whatever comfort of your home or wherever else you are so we hope to see you again next week tune back in every day if you want to see more of us at noon with our meet and greets and we'll see you all again next time